I'm Tim Overall, and I'm absolutely delighted to be able to be speaking at the World Urban Parks 2020 Congress. I'm the Mayor of the Queanbeyan and Palarang Regional Council right here in New South Wales, Australia. I want to commence by acknowledging country, the land of Aboriginal Australians. Been here for over 40,000 years, the Ngambri Ngunnawal people of this land right here. And I pay my respects to Elders past and present, and I extend that respect to all Aboriginal people. Now I'm speaking on leadership and the value of parks in regional Australia, and it's a privilege to be able to do so. I'm going to open with a quote from a very famous Australian poet, Dorothea McKellar. Her poem, My Country. I love a sunburnt country, a land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains, well known by all Australians. But for over 18 months now, Australia has certainly lived up to that description. And indeed, it's been a very challenging period for us all. Queenbeyan and Palarang Regional Council, and I'll refer to it as QPRC because that's what it's known as, is a regional local government body covering approximately 5,500 square kilometres just to the east of Canberra, Australia's national capital. We have a population of 60,000, expected to grow to 80,000 over the next 15 years or so. Queanbeyan City, the heart of our local government area, is the fastest growing inland regional city in Australia. Like most of Eastern Australia, our region has endured devastating drought, the worst in over 30 years, bushfires, isolating communities, destroying homes and taking away livelihoods. We lost around 100 homes during the recent bushfires. And rural townships were devastated. They were isolated due to lengthy road closures. Bushfire heavy and lingering smoke brought with it another set of health challenges for us. The fires and drought were abruptly ended by flooding rains, bringing more destruction and again isolating our communities as far as ways Braidwood and Bungendor. Now, as with us all, we are dealing with a once in a lifetime pandemic, COVID-19. In these times of crisis, more than ever, it's clear communities need strong leadership and support, need respite and access to green spaces to help with their recovery. During these times, our parks and green spaces became critical social infrastructure. QPRC recognises the importance of our parks, green spaces, gardens and sports facilities for our community's health and well-being. During our black summer of 2019-2020, over 17 million hectares were burnt across mainland Australia, 
an area greater than many European countries. In fact, in terms of forest fires, the Eastern Australia forest fire was the biggest ever experienced in the world, according to our recent New South Wales bushfire inquiry conclusions. Enormous toll was taken on the environment, losses of wildlife, farmlands, townships, as well as loss of human life. Council's team found itself at the forefront, supporting fire services and setting up evacuation centres. At the height of the fires, national parks and conservation reserves were caught up in the inferno. However, our urban parks became emergency assembly points and safe zones, even temporary refuges for stranded travellers. Then, fires gave way to floods in February and March. And again, roads were cut. The damage was extensive and the community once again severely impacted, all while still reeling from the fires. During the extended periods of isolation, road closures and school closures, the people of Braidwood, for example, gathered at Ryrie Park Playground to meet friends, support one another for camaraderie and for solace. Following the crisis, the park became a place to celebrate, relax and recover. Now, as we continue through COVID, the increase in demand for our open green spaces is now greater than ever. With the closure of gyms and indoor recreation, people have taken to the parks and walking tracks to keep healthy. Council's role in supporting the community during these events and through the long road of recovery has been challenging, yet paramount to ensure a stronger and healthier community. Council will always be at the forefront of any disaster, be it fire, flood or now COVID-19. Recovery centres were established and continue to this day 12 months later and assistance has been given to the communities right across our local government area with clean up, the cutting of red tape, rate relief and health and wellbeing. Paramount throughout and into the recovery was the continuous access to Council's extensive network of parks, green spaces and open air sports facilities. Parks and open spaces experienced a significant increase in use, especially now during COVID. QPRC has committed to significant investment to provide new facilities across the region. And we are so proud to have been awarded two of only 10 green flag awards held in Australia and those flags do fly high. Work has commenced on a new 50 million regional sports complex. This site will be the new home of football and hockey. Further stages will include a four court basketball stadium and an indoor competitive standard aquatic centre. Work will also soon start on a new sports hub for Bungendore, a community of 4,500 new hard courts, six sports fields, and a 25 metre swimming pool. Council has invested heavily in providing new, accessible, intergenerational playgrounds and the redevelopment of many of our existing playgrounds. And right within the heart of our city, we're lucky to have a beautiful Queanbeyan River 
corridor, live with wildlife including kangaroos, wombats, platypus, the black swan, rakali. Council has worked hard to open safe access along the river for recreational events and relaxation. Yet it's been done in a very sensitive manner that does not compromise our wildlife. Approximately five kilometres of four walkways follow the river corridor. Shared paths are also prominent in Queenbin with over 20 kilometres of off-road shared pedestrian and cycle paths linking our suburbs of Gugong, Jerabombra and Karabar into the central business district. We've invested into our revitalised CBD with major landscaping of Queen Elizabeth Park and an upgraded recreational vehicle park for tourists. Another significant project will be the $75 million redevelopment of the civic and cultural precinct in Queanbeyan Town Centre. This will see a bitumen car park replaced with a green square and public space also and a new rooftop park for staff and events. Queanbeyan Parks are the green lungs of our city, providing cool respite from our very hot Australian summers. Council also hosts or supports community celebrations within our parks. The annual Music by the River, highly successful, the exciting multicultural festival and community Christmas events right across our townships and local government area. As we deal with the changing climate, stresses of life, and move into a post-COVID normal, councils need to be strong and take a leadership role. In 2012, I set the challenge for council to plant 10,000 trees in Queanbeyan, right across our urban area. The new council has taken this onwards, continuing to commit to plant a minimum of 1,200 trees each year. And many of those trees are mature trees to establish, further establish our parks and gardens. We'll continue to build walking tracks and shared paths throughout our communities and we'll continue to put significant value and importance to our parks and open spaces. Plans are already underway to establish a very exciting nine hectare botanical sister city garden on the edge of the Queanbeyan CBD. This project will open up even more river corridor and valuable parkland for community use. Thank you very much and I welcome visitors to our region to enjoy what has been created and to explore the beautiful Queenbeyan Palarang region. <music>